Today is World Cancer Day and advocates are urging us to close the care gap. We look at the import of this on the breakfast this morning as a survivor shares her experience with us. Also, the Nigeria-Ghana rivalry is set to resume as the neighboring nations need to go past each other if they must be at the Qatar 2022 World Cup. What are the chances of Nigeria's Super Eagles on this one? We'll also have a review of today's newspaper headlines. It's one you would want to miss with our expert analysis right here on The Breakfast. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Kofi Bartels. It's a brand new Friday and we're back with very interesting conversations for you on The Breakfast. All right, of course, we have uh, an, a topic, um, a discussion rather on World Cancer Day. We'll be having a guest joining us um, on the program this morning. But um, of course, we also have a discussion on sports. Uh, the ongoing African Nations Cup um, has gotten to the last two teams. But we'll not be looking at that today, if maybe time permits, we will. But uh, Nigeria and Ghana will be going at each other again. Another chance for uh, Twitter to go haywire. And um, what are the chances of Super Eagles on that one against the Black Stars of Ghana? Uh, we'll be discussing that with mighty judge. But let's just let's, let's take a look and a uh, feel of the pulse of what's been trending in the stories that Nigerians have been talking about. That's what we bring to you every single morning and today will be no different. Well, a, a video popped up online and this was really, really scary. Um, it was about uh, an explosion on a, an FPSO. What exactly is an FPSO? An FPSO is a, you can see the pictures on your screen, a floating um, production uh, storage and a floating vessel. This is what the oil and gas companies use offshore. You know, it's called floating because it has to be on water. And what we're told um, is that um, that floating production storage and a floating vessel um, was destroyed by an explosion and their fears growing over the fate of its crew. Their fears growing over the fate of its crew. This is on the high waters somewhere of the coast of Delta State um, located in OML 1. OML-108, and it's operated, we're told, uh, by an indigenous player in the oil and gas uh, sector, a Shiba A&P Company Limited, or SEPCO for short, SEPCO for short. And this is the, uh, called the Trinity FPSO. Uh, you know, you don't have um, such facilities existing on their own. You usually have human beings manning these facilities. And uh, the Trinity Spirit FPSO was rocked by the blast uh, in, the, in the early hours, we're told, of, um, of uh, the morning of the 3rd, or the 2nd, rather, of uh, February 2022. Um, there were multiple news reports, and so we had to dig into to, you know, the bottom of this and also to monitor what people were saying online. Um, the latest we have is that the SEPCO chief executive, he is uh, Ikemefuna uh, Okafo. Um, he was cited yesterday by Reuters news agency is saying, quote, at this time, at this time, there are no reported fatalities, but we can confirm that uh, there were 10 crew on board the vessel prior to the incident, and we are prioritizing investigations with respect to the safety and security. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of comments coming from that, uh, you know, video showing the explosion, people were concerned first of all about the safety of the crew if there, if there were any on that floating um, a facility also nigerians were expressing concern about the the environment so i'm saying you know the the fishes in the water um the the aqua life and all that will be affected something needs to be done as quickly as possible because apart apart from the the the, the fire and the debris from that floating uh, uh facility the fps or floating production storage and offloading uh, terminal and um, um, the 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 crude oil that may be going to that terminal will could spill you know so p people are, are concerned about the the oil spillage you can see the water there looks clean it looks it looks green it looks um sort of greenish blue so that's something very 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 uh somewhere on the high sea uh so so, so we don't want to be seen 
a lot of these oil spillages because we've suffered a lot of it uh, for too long. The Niger Delta uh, said to be the most polluted delta in the world, in the world. But um, the, the, the chief executive of SEPCO, uh, who owns this Trinity uh, FPSO, he said investigations are underway uh, uh, into the cause of the explosion while attempts to contain the situation were being made uh, with the help from nearby communities. So nearby communities are the ones trying to help control the situation. You have fishermen. Um, a clean Nigeria Associates and Chevron, uh, which operates the nearby S. Cravos facility. So this floating production, storage, and offloading terminal uh, belonging to SEPCO is not far from the S. Cravos facility in Delta State. So I think that gives people an idea of um, where it is. But according to Reuters, and this is, this is quite uh, uh, important and interesting, um, the company, SEPCO, is, they are reporting that the company is currently in receivership and uh, a form of bankruptcy protection. So it, it remains to be seen if this particular incident is controlled or you know, uh, connected somehow um, to, to that, that bankruptcy and uh, financial issues that the company may be having in terms of being in receivership. But we just hope for the very best. Um, uh, we at Plus Sea Africa will be trying to get in touch with Nostra and Nezria to see what exactly uh, will come out of that or what is being done uh, regarding that. Um, let's move on to the next one. This one is um, a hijab protest in Kwara State. Um, uh, you know, there were scenes of, of, of persons on the streets of Kwara State protesting against uh, um, the, the government's directive to management uh, of schools in the state. Um, if you're even following this story, uh, you'll remember that uh, on January 25, uh, the Kwara State government had directed management of schools in Kwara State to allow the use of the hijab uh, by willing Muslims without forcing it on anyone or turning them back for using the hijab. Um, some Muslim parents and, and you know, their, uh, their wards were seen on major streets of Ilori on Wednesday protesting against the management of uh, uh, Onyu Baptist high school for turning back students wearing hijab this this has been a contentious issue in not just nigeria but around the world we can talk about france for instance but in nigeria especially particularly in the southwestern states of nigeria um so so the students uh, muslim students and parents hit the streets um uh, against the management of that school a baptist high school after they turned back some students wearing the hijab, a government delegation, we're told, um, led by the Commissioner for Education in Kwara State, has gone to that school two times, twice, uh, to try to resolve the matter. We were also told that uh, another delegation led by the, the Commissioner for Local Government and Chief Tensi Affairs in that state also visited the town uh, for the same reason yesterday. But um, yesterday, despite all these efforts, a fraca erupted when some Muslim parents and students uh, stormed the school premises, as you can see the scenes on your screen, um, to protest the rejection of the awards uh, and members by the school. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really contentious issue in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Kwara is one state. Oshun State has also had its experiences, even when the former governor, Aregbe Shola, was there. Um, well, eyewitnesses are telling Plus TV Africa that the uh, protest later degenerated into violence. And um, there was, there were, there were, it went physical when an unidentified man rushed to the school to inform other protesters of a machete cut. That's really, 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 really sad. Now, we told that this triggered an angry reaction from the Muslim protesting parents as they looked around for various weapons to defend themselves. Um, but thankfully, thankfully, uh, the members of the offic officials of a Nigeria police force um, returned or responded to quell the situation. Also, we told, apart from the Nigeria police force, um, the Nigeria Civil and Security and Civil Defense Corps, um, who might be scrapped in the coming months, were also there to quell the situation. These are very disturbing images coming from Kwara State. So very, uh, very disturbing images. And we, we just hope for the best as far as that situation is concerned. Now, the last story we've been monitoring, and this one has also got a lot of Nigerians talking. Uh, this one, I don't know if you saw it coming, um, but we're told that the president 
um, uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, has launched what he, what he calls the a national or revised national policy on population for sustainable development. So uh, this is saying the federal government is muting um, population control in Nigeria, a population control policy in the country. Now, how about that? Um, we hear about population control in countries like China, where they have the one family, one child policy, you know, which has been relaxed a bit in recent years. And, but when this news erupted, Nigerians started reacting. Why is government going ahead you know, to embark on, on a population control policy? Opinion has been divided amongst those who have been commenting on this, some for and some against. But this is the revised national policy on population control for sustainable development. The president is stressing uh, the need for urgent measures um, to address Nigeria's high fertility rate. Um, and this is something that some experts have talked about in the past. And we've asked this question before in the media. It's been discussed on television, on radio, online. The growth rate of the Nigerian population. It's something that needs to be discussed. And uh, finally, the government is doing something about it. They want to address Nigeria's high fertility uh, rate through expanding access to modern contraceptive methods. Um, you know, it, 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 people are saying, okay, may all this is grammar, you know, uh, you know, expanding access through uh, modern contraceptive methods. But the president also inaugurated the National Council on Population Management, uh, chaired by himself, very importantly, uh, the vice president also as a deputy chairman of this National Council on Population Management. And um, you have uh, uh, the heads of relevant ministries, departments and agencies there. Um, you know, if the president is sharing this himself, it means that he takes it very personally. Um, so this was put out by um, Femi Adeshina, who is the president's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, special assistant on media and publicity um, yesterday. You know, so, so it's, it's become a, a contention. Some are saying, no, start from the north. Some say start from the south. You know, um, some saying that uh, the president's people kick against it uh, and, and all this. You know, uh, someone says, some say they need to start from the lawmakers first. Um, you know, they're giving birth a lot and all that. People are looking at the geopolitics and the, uh, the cultural dynamics in different parts of the country. You know, um, some say start from the National Assembly. A whole lot of people are making fun of it. But these are, are real and serious issues. Issues that that need to be talked about, um, and some are, are actually, uh, you know, suspecting that the federal government is just trying to balance things out with both policies: um, the national policy for sustainable development uh, on population for sustainable development, and the national council on population management. You know, opinion is divided. They say, okay, this is just trying to balance things out, but the. The, the crux of the matter is that Nigeria, as a country, is embarking on um, a population control policy. How would this be implemented? How would this be carried out? Are we going to see the government saying um, we want to have one child now in Nigeria? Uh, experts have linked some of the conflicts in the country and the difficulties to um, uh, the exploding population. And for those who live in urban centers, uh, especially cities like Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and so on, uh, they'll realize that they, these cities have experienced a population explosion in recent years. And this is something um, that I'm sure we'll be getting the experts in to talk about in the coming days and weeks right here on Plus TV Africa. Well, it seems uh, very few national issues can be uh, weighed by the public without talking about the north-south divide in the country. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we dive into the pages of the national dailies. Stay with us. <laughs> 